The other mark he said of a false prophet, notice what it says here. In Matthew 7, in the Sermon on the Mount, he spoke about false prophets. He says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing with evangelical doctrine. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. Now, what does a wolf want when he comes covering himself with the sheep's clothing in the midst of the sheep? What does he want? He hasn't come to bless the sheep. He pretends to be one of them, but his aim is to get something for himself. A wolf comes into the midst of sheep only to get something for himself. You can be pretty sure of that. So what does the sheep want? He wants to bite. What does the wolf want? He wants to bite off whatever he can from the sheep to feed himself. He's greedy. He's ravenous. He wants to bite off from the sheep as much as he can get from the sheep of the sheep's meat to feed himself. That's the mark of a false prophet. One mark of a false prophet, he said, so how shall, we be, how shall we detect a false prophet? Not by his doctrine. He may preach the right doctrine. He may do miracles. He may, in Jesus' name, he may cast out demons in Jesus' name. He may preach in Jesus' name. He may be a very eloquent speaker. But you will find in him a greedy desire. Listen carefully. If you want to identify a false prophet, you will find in him a greedy desire to eat up whatever is yours and take it for himself, primarily your money, your possessions. That is the way, one of the ways to identify a false prophet. If you only go by doctrine, the sheep's clothing, you'll be deceived. But you've got to look underneath that doctrine, underneath that sheep's clothing. What is he after? He is after my money. And he quotes scripture to get my money. He talks about the need. He talks about the laborer being worthy of his hire. And you never see Jesus saying such things, asking people for their money. There's not a single instance of Jesus asking people to support him or his ministry. People gave voluntarily, cheerfully. He accepted it. It's true, he said, the laborer is worthy of his hire, but the laborer doesn't have to go around asking people because whose laborer is he? If you work for company A, do you go and ask for your salary from company B? No. You get your salary from company A, and if you don't get it from company A, maybe they forgot to give it to you, you go to the boss in company A and say, hey, I worked for you for this month. Where's my salary? You can't go to the man on the street and say, give me my money. You didn't work for him. If you're a servant of the Lord, whom should you go to for your needs? To man? Then you're a servant of man. I've been a servant of the Lord for 40 years. I've never gone to a single man for any need of mine, leave alone money, any other need. Because I'm serving the Lord. I go to the one I serve, the master, and say, Lord, here I've served you, but I've never had to go to him. He always takes care of my need even before I go. He's more faithful than any company A, B, or C, or X, Y, or Z. Any company. He's more faithful. So, remember this. Beware of ravenous wolves who are eager to bite off what you have. They're not interested in your welfare. They're interested in getting from you what you have.